Oh. What do you think, then? What do I think about what? She's in there with him now. Who are you talking about? That Janet Barlow. She's in Ken Barlow's with him now. Oh, yes. Had them under observation, have you? I just happened to be passing as he was letting her in. Where are you? Sorry me, Mrs. Walker. <coughs> so what do you reckon, then? What do you mean, what do I reckon? What do you think he'll take her back? Tell you what I think, Hilda. I think it's none of my business like it's none of yours. And if there is a chance of them getting together, it's not going to be helped by the likes of me and you shoving us noses in. I'll have a light out, please. You'll not. The towel's over the pumps and they're stopping over the pumps till I've had my cup of tea. Now, shut that door on your way out, will you, lovey? Drunk with power, that's your trouble, Betty mm. Turpin. Yeah, and I'll little to you and all. Is it sweet enough for you? It's lovely, thanks. Aren't you having one? Yes, 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 yes. I'll pour it. No, for you. no, it's all right. I went to Elsie's. Oh? I didn't realise you'd moved. Oh, I see, yes. Uh, yes, I moved some time ago, actually. Thought I'd better keep an eye on Uncle Albert. Well, he's not getting any younger, is he? Or any sweeter. He's, uh, he's out, is he? Yes, he's got out to Glasgow, actually. See the twins. They're, uh, Keeping well, are they? Fine. And you? All right. You? Fine. How is the taxi business? Well, oh, I really wouldn't know. I kicked all that under touch about a year ago. You're not on the dole, are you? <laughs> no, I'd probably be better off if I was there. No, I work for the local authority. I'm the uh, community development officer. I'm impressed. Are you? What does the job involve? Oh, well, pretty much what it says. Principally youth work. I would have thought you'd be good at that. I enjoy it very much, actually. More than anything else I've ever done. That's the important thing. You didn't think that once upon a time? No. But you've not really been over to the factory, have you? I most certainly have. Oh, well, what happened? Nothing very much. Your little passion flower had gone home. Oh, thank goodness for that. However, there's always tomorrow. Oh, for heaven's sake, Emily, if you're going to cause a scene over something so stupid as this, well, you're, you're just making yourself a complete laughing stock. I have no plans to cause any scenes, Ernest, merely to do what you're apparently incapable of doing, putting a stop to this once and for all. I mean, what would you suggest I do? Simply stand by while she runs after you right under my nose? Just ignore her. Oh, I've tried that already, Ernest. It isn't easy. When rather large and romantic Valentine cards are delivered to the door. All right, I'll have another word with her myself, just to make sure she's got the message. All right? No, it's not all right, Ernest. A word from you seems like water down a drain pipe to that woman. Emily, don't you think you're being just a little ridiculous? If anybody's being ridiculous round here, it certainly isn't me, Ernest. I know of nothing more pathetic than a middle-aged man being patently flattered by the attentions of younger women. Flattered? Well, aren't you? After all, she's not entirely unattractive, and you are, as they say, at something of a funny age. Now you are being ridiculous. You know, you'll have me thinking in a minute that you're actually jealous of Thelma. Oh, what rubbish. Well, I'm sorry, Emily, but that's the way it's beginning to look like to me. Frankly, Ernest, I'm not concerned about how it looks to you. It's how it looks to everybody else round here. Not having your Catholic sense of humour, I don't happen to enjoy standing by like cheese at fourpence while she makes a mug of me. And since you obviously aren't capable of discouraging her, then obviously I'm going to have to, aren't I? Do you uh, still not use these things? No, thanks. You don't mind if I do? Your funeral? There's a merry thought. Have you... Uh... Oh, yeah, come on. Thanks. What do you want, Janet? What? What have you come to see me about? Divorce. Well, when Len told me you were coming, I naturally assumed that... Well, what else would we have to talk about? Yes, I can see you would think that's what it was. Were you trying to say that that isn't why you've come? 
I happened to be in the area and just wondered how you were. I thought it was a long time since we'd had a chat. Do you want a divorce? It would tidy things up. There is that, I suppose. Are you still living with Vince? Yeah. Yes. How are things? Oh, fine. Well, actually, we've been getting on each other's nerves a bit lately. Oh? Two positive people. There are bound to be strains. Yes. Yeah. Does he know you're here? He's away for a few days, on business. It wouldn't make any difference. We've always had that sort of arrangement, led our own lives. You haven't found anybody else, have you? Uh, no, no. Uh, well, not really, not seriously. Safer that way? Yes, yes, I suppose so. Look, Janet, I'm, uh, I'm sort of responsible for the community centre across the street, and uh, I have to go over there for a bit. In fact, I'm due there for a meeting now. Oh. Look, do you mind if I hang on here? I, I don't seem to have much else to do at the moment. Out here? Yes. Oh, no. No, of course not. Uh, it may be quite a while, though. Oh, that's all right. I'll see you later, then. Fine. Pinned any passing flies to the board lately, then? Not lately. Find a bit of please, okay. though. Uh, you play a bit too, you then? A bit. Yeah, like uh, News of the World Finals. <laughs> I didn't win them last year. Oh dear, well into every life. Eddie Yates. Baz, Baz Wilson. Hey. Uh, you're not from round here, are you? No, just from you round here. Ah. You play a bit, do you? No, I'm uh, more on the managerial side, if you know what I mean. I see, yeah. Yeah. Mind you, there are one or two round here who do fancy themselves. Yeah? Oh yeah, just waiting for the right bloke to come along, scatter a few juicy peas under their noses. I get the drift, right? Yeah. yeah, I thought you might. You've got that look about you. You know, mean. <laughs> oh, hello, sunshine. Oh, hi. Uh, double scotch and water for you, Betty. Right. Well, I hate you filling your boots a bit tonight, aren't you? Well, you know what they say. It's always opening time somewhere. Yeah. Everything all right, is it? Good question. Janet. You've heard of you. Well, I knew she was about. She were in the cabin this afternoon. 52p, lovely. Oh, thank you. What did she want this time? I don't know. Well, what did she say? Oh, she just said that she was in the area and she dropped in to see how I was. Don't you believe her? Well, after all this time, I haven't seen her for 18 months. What do you think she wants? A divorce? I don't know. There's something about her. What? Well, there's something about her manner. There's something wrong. I can sense it. Ken's gone out, Hilda. Oh! Oh, well, now I'm done. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, you found him then? Yes. Mm. Just a social call, is it? That's right. Uh, oh, I was forgetting what I'd come for. You see, I'd just poured Stan's tea out and I found I hadn't got a spot of sugar in the house. You couldn't give us the end of a cup full, could you? I'm disappointed in you, Hilda. Pardon? I thought you could have come up with something better than that old thing. I'm sure I don't know what you're hinting at. I'm not hinting at anything, Hilda. I'm telling you straight. You're no more short of sugar than that shop on the corner of the street. You saw me come in here and you've come to see what's going on, haven't you? Well, I don't have to stop here to be insulted by the likes of you, any road. No, of course you don't. So what are you going to do about it? Hmm. Not made you no sweeter, has it? Living over at Brush. Right, so can I get you another? Uh, no, no, I'll get these. Oh, thank okay. you. Mugs away. Or oh, have you two young fellas had enough? Go on, then, you can't keep on whacking us. Eh, you wouldn't like to put a little bit of the Queen's liquid on it eh, this time by any chance, would you? Ten for your head. Make it twenty, if you like. It's our birthday, Lannis. Middles for diddles. Six feet. All right, Bresnia. Start unveiling the guided missiles. We're in.
Oh, Vince, don't hang up. Look, I I'm sorry about what I said. I didn't mean it, you know that. Well, I I've been a bit edgy lately. You've been a bit edgy too. No. No, I'm not starting again, Vince. Look, I'm not saying it wasn't my fault. Vince, take me back, please. What? He can't be finished. He can't finish just like that. Well, doesn't what I feel matter at all? Vince! Vince! Um, excuse me, please, but um, haven't you forgotten something? I've forgotten? My change. Oh, I'm sorry you weren't due any. Is it that much for a cup of coffee? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Honestly, I'm ashamed to take your money, but, well, it's the world shortage, you see. Oh, I see. <laughs> Have you got a copy of Knitting World, please? Oh, well, we, we are supposed to be closed, actually. Oh. But, well, if, if you'd just like to have a look on the rack. Thank you. I... Oh, where have you been? Why is it always me that has to cope with a last-minute rush? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I do it deliberately to make you happy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Cos I know you're never more happy than when you're miserable. And you're never more miserable than when you're in here on your own skivvying while I'm out enjoying myself. So, you see, I do it on purpose to put you in your favourite humour. Does that make sense to you? Not particularly, no. No, it doesn't to me either. Still, you got to admit, it makes a change from saying, sorry I'm late back, I got talking. Oh, look, more and more late customers. Oh, uh, yes, Emily. Miss James, isn't it? Hello, Mrs Bishop. Thank you for the valentine you sent my husband. You did send him one, didn't you? Yes, I did. Do you mind telling me why? Well, it was just a bit of fun. Hardly a fun card. Depends what your idea of fun is. And your idea of fun's throwing yourself at married men, is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you telling me you haven't been running after my husband at every opportunity since that dance at the centre a few weeks ago? I only see him at work. You hang about outside the factory waiting for him. You accost him in the rovers. It's not my fault if he's got a wife who... What? Doesn't understand him? For the record, Miss James, his wife understands him very well, actually. You don't go out in with fact, him In fact, she understands his difficulty about somebody like you. He sees you as the shy, retiring, wallflower type, you see. Whereas I see you as you really are. More of a Venus flytrap. You can't Honest talk to me to be like the sort that. of person who will go to nearly any lengths to avoid hurting somebody's feelings. I'm not. So could I make it quite clear, once and for all, Miss James, that if this nonsense doesn't stop forthwith, our next conversation won't be half so polite. She didn't say what she'd come in for. Hello. Hi. You had your tea? No, I haven't actually, but I've got a bit of steak in the fridge. I'll grill it for you. No, it's all right, Janet. I'm not hungry. I'll have it later. Yes. Well, let's stop playing games, shall we, Janet? I mean, what exactly have you come for? Why are you here? Well, I told you I was in the district. I'm sorry, Janet. I... That's not good enough. We had a row. You might say that. A bad one? Pretty bad. Very bad, in fact. Are you trying to tell me that you've left him? Yes. I see. Oh, it was more than a row, Ken. People have rows, I know that. It, it's been coming on for months, a sort of realisation, I suppose. What have you realised? What a fool I was to leave you for him. Oh, come on, Janet. You didn't leave me for him. You'd already lost me when he came along. Remember me? That failed potential captain of industry, the social disaster area, representing everything that you despised in a husband, your words. I was stupid, Kent. You meant it at the time. I was wrong. I admit I was wrong. I don't believe that you believe that, Janet. People change, Ken. Y your values aren't permanent. 
You reach a point in your life when you look back and you ask yourself, why? What was it all for to get here? If you say so. I admire you, Ken. <gasps> what? Sometimes you have to stand away from people to see them as they really are. You don't admire me, Janet. You've had a row with Vince, that's all. I'm just an available shoulder to cry on like I was last time when he hit you. I do admire you, Ken. You know your place in life, your, your context, if you like. My own little patch in the rut. The important thing is to be happy, to know how to be happy. You know, I can't remember when I could say that, that I was actually happy. If he came through that door now and wanted you back, you'd go out through it with him. No. No, I wouldn't. Um, could I have a bit of lemon and half a bit of Yes, you can, do. What's the joke? Hello, Annie. Oh, I'm... Oh, hello. Tell me, how are you? All right. Did your wife tell you she'd seen me? Uh, yes, she did, isn't she? Very possessive, isn't she? Oh, I don't know. Can I buy you a drink? Uh, no, Thank thanks, love. I, uh, I don't think it'd be a very good idea. Excuse me. Uh, can I get you something? Well, uh, well, if I can't love it, I mean, there's a very nice little pub about five miles down the road. Perhaps you should try that. They do say that that's full of spare fellas, and most of them don't even belong to anybody yet. Did you get the message, lovey? Yes. Half a bit of this time, Half, though, please. Right. I'll get that. Wally? <coughs> that's the name, pal. Wally. Here's yourself. I saw this picture once about... Uh, the fellow was marvellous at pool, you know, American snooker. Oh, yeah. He's taking all his mates for every cent he could get off him. They got a bit sick of him, so one night they took him outside and he broke his fingers. Ooh, nasty. Very nasty. Oh, he didn't like it a bit, yeah. Still, I suppose there's, there's always an element of risk when you're uh, hustling. I wouldn't know. Oh, no. no, 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 you wouldn't have gone. I think it's about a quid you owe us, isn't it? One fair and square. Uh, well, hand it over, mate. Otherwise, I might have to uh, break your neck. Fred, are you or are you not supposed to be helping me at the back of this bar? Come on, Betty, love. I'm 50p down already. Look at Mrs. Walker comes in and finds all these empty glasses. She'll have your guts for garters. Five minutes, there, love. Four. And that's my final offer. I wonder where Baz got to. Oh, he's probably gone out the back. Do you want a chuck for him? No, you're all right. I'll hang on. If you're going to hang on, you're going to have a long wait. Hey? Well, when he went out, he took his coat with him. And his dance. The flaming money's gone. The thieving toe rag. I've been robbed. It's terrible that like, you can't trust anybody these days, can you? It wasn't all bad, was it, Ken? With us. No, it wasn't all bad, Janet. But when it was bad, it was pretty bad. I've changed, Ken. What I've been through this last year does change you. No, no, people don't change, Janet, not really. Oh, sure, they get hurt, they get clobbered and flattened for a while, and then they're different. Or they seem different, their attitudes are different, tempered. But it doesn't last. The change is not permanent. Give me another chance, Ken. I'll settle down. We can bring the twins back No here. way, Janet! It was a mistake! The whole marriage bit was a mistake. We realised that and we made a decision on it, and it was the right decision. I don't want you back, Janet. Ever. I don't know what to do. Oh, you'll survive. Why do you go back to him, kiss and make up? I don't know where to go. There's nowhere to go. Well, if you like, I'll book you into a hotel. Can't somewhere. I stay here tonight? No, no. Just for was... tonight, Ken, oh, please. You're not being fair. It was you that left me, remember? You're no longer my bloody problem! No, of course not. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Ken. Hang on. Just for tonight. All right. If you want me to... It... No, I said all right. Thanks. Where... Where shall I sleep? Well, you can use my bed. I'll sleep down here. I'll get some blankets. Do you two...
you realise what time it is? It's nearly 11 o'clock. It's not, is it? Well, don't take my word for it. That's the speaking clock. Though she's probably dropped off by now. Oh, hey, what am I going to do? What do you mean, what are you going to do? Well, it's a dead long way home along Canal Bank. Well, what do you usually do? Get a bus, but it'll be gone by now. Well, I'm very sorry you can't stop here, cos we're going to bed. Oh, it'll be all right if I stick to main roads, which well lit. Oh, what's the girl chase down Jubilee Terrace? Oh, shut up, girl. I'm scared enough as it is. <laughs> Are you scared of the dark, Elsie? All right, you can stop here if you want to. Here? Yes, I'd never forgive myself if I'd happened to you on the way home, would I? Well, are you sure you won't mind? Well, I won't have to mind, will I? It's Hobson's choice, isn't it? But I don't want to put you to any trouble, love. Oh, you won't put me to any trouble, love. I won't let you. Oh, thanks, Elsie. That's great oh, of you. Oh, give over. Take these up bottom and stick them in the spare bed. Thanks. Probably be damp. Thanks, Elsie. Well, what shall we do? Nothing. Nothing at all. Good night. I'll go up, then. Right. Good night. Good night. Saturday on Granada Plus, a Coronation Street special focusing on the love life of Bette Lynch, Britain's most famous barmaid. Blondes Have More Fun starts at 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Next tonight, something Bette would certainly approve of, The Good Life Guide.